said times in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shut my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The hell we gonna- Okay guys, welcome back to the membership. Today we're gonna be going over, as we spoke about, how to use the remapping software and how to use it to remap your own car. Now, obviously we're not gonna be doing really a tune on this software because obviously I ain't got a car to test it on as I spoke to you about already. I will be linking the software underneath in the description. You can go and download it and it only have to be on my Google Drive because it's available on the internet, you guys can download it. If you do have trouble installing it, just let me know and I'll help you out to install it. It's not very hard, but it is a freeware, so therefore it don't have to be linked to my Google Drive, but I may link it depending. If not, it's just a site you can go down and download it. Many people already know this software, but also you must have the KESS to read the file before you do this, or you must read it via BDM. There's many ways of reading the ECU to get a flash file, so you can bring it into remapping, but I'm just gonna show you the basics of it. And we're gonna be using the software ECM Titanium. A lot of people ain't aware of it. It is the beginner software for remapping. It's very, very easy. If you're a professional, you can use WinOS, which is another one which I use again, which will be on the membership, and I will be showing you how to use that video later on regarding that. But we're gonna be doing this remapping video. Then the next one I'm gonna be showing you is how to flash a DME, because something I keep getting requested by a lot of the members on who are already on here, how to update their E60 software, which I'll be showing you on the bench how to do that. So let's get onto the ECM Titanium and let's switch over to the computer so you guys can see it all in clear and detail. Okay guys, so as you see here, we've now got ECM Titanium loaded. Now, I know a lot of you probably have difficulty probably hearing me and that's because I'm using the AirPods while screen recording, but I, should, I, should, I usually turn it up in the sound editor anyway so you guys can hear me. So as you will see here, it shows all the drivers and the updated drivers and all the files we've got in here for the database because as you see at the top here, it says no driver selected. Now, driver will be for each individual car, depending on the mapping, and ECM Titanium will find it. Now, if you see here, it says original EEPROM, modified EEPROM. So, modified EEPROM will be your modified file after you've uh, modified it. Now, a lot of you probably already know about this software, whoever's tuning and you all know how to use it. A lot of the things that people don't know how to do is the hex decimal, which is the EEPROM and all the characters in the hex decimal system, which a lot of people struggle to understand. But if you've ever done computer coding or programming on normal computers or built a program, you'll know how that works. So that's something we're gonna be showing later on in a lot of videos. But here today, I'm gonna to be showing you ECM Titanium. Now, when you first load this up, you just load it up from your desktop, it will just load straight up. Um, when you install it, you need to make sure you load all the database to be able to find all the drivers. Now, as many of you guys know, when you get this from um, legitly via KESS, via Alien Tech, it comes with the ECM Titanium. But then you also have to worry about uh, the USB stick that you gotta carry around with the database on it to make the software work. So today we're just gonna go into browse, and then as you'll see here, that's all my files, which we don't want. We're gonna go down here, and we're gonna find my folder, which will be around here for the, uh, software so all the files i've got as you see here from all the cars i've done so we're just going to use today the m52 flash which is that one right here and then we'll just click ok and open then it will search database again then as you can see it scan the database until it finds the proper one that we need which it can't runs very slow once it's searching the database. So we are using the flash file for this. Some may need to use the micro memory, some may need to use the flash. For instance, on the diesel, you can't use the flash, you need to use the micro memory and load that up as well. But on the petrol, it seems like it uses the flash. And as you see, there's bring up the car, which is a 530i, MSV70, which I know a lot of you've been waiting for. Um, this is how I've tuned these, so you managed to tune it. And this is how you've got it right there. So as you see here, we now just go to accept the driver which is the right one. Do you want to save this original file into the database? And then you're just gonna click no, because we don't. So when it opens up, as you'll see here, you've got the torque limiter, rev limiter, speed limiter, spark advance, spark advance middle throttle, spark advance injection, part throttle injection. Because obviously these are the things you need to be able to balance the mapping out. Now bearing in mind, this is just a petrol, so, it varies upon car. For instance, torque limiter is only here because this is the 630i, which this mapping come from, which shows 530i, I don't know why, um, which are the three stage manifold, so it will show that. But if you've got a normal, for instance, if you've got the normal, um, I don't know, M52K, which many of you do, if you were to put your a flash into here, you wouldn't be able to see that. That's because your torque limiter, you don't really have to talk because you don't have no power going to really to talk. You get torque, but it all comes through via the gearbox. Well, on this, it comes through the disses and the gearbox. So it's going to vary based on your car, based on your flash valve. So 
as I say, if you get a diesel, you will have the torque limiter as well, and also the turbo spool and everything else. But this one you don't. This is why I do, petrol is a lot easier to tune. And obviously, you don't you can't gain much power of petrol as they push it to its full limits um, as well on a petrol, based on the fact that they're trying to get as much power as possible for top end. So because there's no turbocharger, especially on this engine. So let's go into the just into the injection apart for all. And then as you see here, when we click that, you get all the characters. Now, if you just press ESC, as you can see there which is escape key. I'm switching back between original, if you can see down here, and driver. So that's the driver, and that's the original flash file. So if you can see, you've got the checksum, the even, the odd, 16-bit and a 32-bit. So that's all what needs to be run on the DME. Now, as you can see here, it's all the same. So on the driver, what I can do is I can actually change all this around um, if I really wanted to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you, for instance, this is the RPM load up to 6,000 RPM. So this is the load on the engine. Do I want to make it too overpowerful that it's going to end up detonating more cooling spark knock and obviously destroying your engine as well at the same time? Because you've got to make sure there's enough air, air to fuel ratio as well to burn. So that's the thing. As you see here, at 700 RPM load at five miles an hour. You can see there's 150 RPM and then it goes up and up and up and up based on the speed. Now you need to be careful of this because as you see, it goes to 9,700 RPM. Um, if we also go into the 2D graph, which is right here, you can also see here, we can adjust the tune in here. So we can see it all here as well, which is what we want to adjust. And now, if you just right click there, you can drag it and you can pull it to wherever you want. So for instance, I'll just right click it on that one and I can remove it as well like that, as you see. Um, you want to just base it where you want to put the map in. So for instance, we can also zoom in, as you can see there, to get a better perspective of how it's tuned. So as you see here, it starts here, then comes up here to 1,000 RPM, and then down for the load, um, because you don't want to put too much load on the engine while doing this. Now, if we switch between the original and driver as well, we, we can tune it based on what we want um, on the curve. Now, we can also, which a lot of people ain't aware of, we can also go into 3D mapping of this as well, which I'm just trying to get switch over to the 3D mapping so you guys can see. So as you see, guys, now we're in the 3D mapping. And as you'll see here, we can select the mapping where we want it. And as you can see, that's the graph right there. And it's quite high, the graph. When you think about it, everything's all over the place. So it's, it's quite high. And you just want to be careful when you balance this out that not to overdo it and as you can see that's all gone green because that's where the map is now like i say you can see all the blue there that's the difference between the original and the modified flash so the modified and it's the same so what we want to do is just want to change it around so we can do that we're just going to change it so as you can see there we can turn it all around and see how the mapping looks so it starts at low rpm as you see there um, and that's the graph you'll be able to see when using the software. You can tune it for any way you basically want. Now, if we go back to home, and then we were to do go to, I don't know, the rev limiter. As you can see there, 6,400. Now, if I wanted to change that for the rev limiter, it's very easy to do. What you're gonna click is up here, edit value, and I can raise it to 7,000 RPM, and then save that. And then as you see there, the edit file is now on 7,000 RPM mass green because that's the driver. So we can edit the driver for the RPM limit. A lot of you guys always ask me that how to heighten the rev limit to remove it. If we wanted to actually remove it, we could actually put it on 9,000. So again, if we just wanted to do that and we go to here, we go to edit or we can restore, which we did. That's the maximum value it wants to give. If we wanted to do that and we can pull it as, I don't know, 9,000 RPM and then save it as well, which is what we can do, we can do a lot of different things with this if we wanted to mess about a bit. So you see that there are 9,000 set in there, but 6,000 foot, six, we've hit the max value. So if we do the lowest value first, and then we change that over to edit the value and then 9,000. And then it's saved. So you see there, the RPM limit's now 9,000. So we've got a high RPM limit of 9,000. So we've just edited that software already. They say this software is very easy to use, but for someone who's never done this, it ain't easy. So as you see, it's, that was 258 kilometers an hour. Now we can move the speed limit as well. So for instance, 258 kilometers an hour, if you'd work, you need to work that at miles per hour, which is 160 miles per hour, um, 258 kilometers. So what we could do is put that up to say 180 and that removes the speed limit on the car. So there is no speed limit. So when you guys are asking how you remove the speed limit, or how you remove the rev limit, this is how it's done. It's not very hard to do at all. As you see there, it just has to change it. And again, we'll just go into the editor, which is right here. 
edit the value and I will just put um, 300 kilometers an hour and then save. Then you've got the save right there. So now it's at 300 kilometers an hour. So now we've modified that as well. So now if we click home and as you see that that's all done, now the torque limiter. So the torque limit, as you see here, is where you see the torque. Now, as you can see here, you've got all the differences on the RPM and everything else. So if we go into 2D graph, you can see the torque here, how much torque is delivering and vice versa and how to adjust it. So for instance, if you go do that, it goes too large. We don't want to do that, but we just want to scale it to see where the torque comes in. So for instance, the torque comes here for the, you've got to match the torque with the RPM to not counteract it. So you, for instance, you get too much uh, fuel, but no torque, so you won't get no power to your rear wheels either. So you need to make sure it's all kind of balanced. So for instance, here we go. Now we can see it pro properly here. Um, if you look at it there from that perspective, the torque comes in uh, all over the place. And if we just forwards it here, you can see there, the torque's coming in all over. And what we're gonna wanna do is we could edit all these torque so for instance, we can just right click on that and we can right click here. And as you can see, we've heightened the torque already there. So that's already done. So that's what you were gonna to wanna to do. And as you're gonna to wanna to see, that's the graph right there that I've put in there for the torque curve. I'm just showing you guys how you do it, but you've got to balance it all correctly. For instance, um, let's just go back on zooming in and out the map a bit. So as you see, when you zoom in, the higher it goes, but don't scare yourself thinking that that's how much torque you're gonna get, because it's not. It, it's all different, all completely different, and you just gotta know where to go on it. You gotta watch what you're gonna do, where you're gonna put it, what you're gonna, how you're gonna balance the torque out. Because as you see here, that's the torque curve. That right there is the whole torque curve that you're getting. That's a torque balanced, and it's all balanced. <clears throat> and you get more torque between here. Torque all comes through at the low range. The 2000 RPM, 3800, so what you need to do is just be aware that this is the torque curve, how it comes in. So there's no torque really at top end, as you see there. Only in select areas there's torque, but not very high up. Only here we've got a peak. So as you see there, you get a drift of what's actually going on here with the torque curve. So if we come out back out of that one, and now we go to the spark advance. As you see here now, this is the spark advance angle. Now, this is all different based on how you want it, but I wouldn't go more than, for instance, at 700 RPM load, um, the 60, I would only put around 70. I wouldn't over over put too much on there. I would only put uh, 70 for, to be safe. I wouldn't overdo that. And the same with 13, I would put 15. You've got to be very normal when changing all this out. Don't think of just um, trying to mess about with it too much. For instance, I would put here, and I would end up editing that one right here. So I'd put 15 in here and I would just edit that with that and I would just put 15 there to be safe. And the same for this one, you've got 15 there and 17 and 60. So for instance, if this is 17, I wouldn't do more than, for instance, 19 on the 700 RPM load. You've got to very, be very well like balanced on your mapping. Do not change anything. I've always done it like this and I've got quite a few files already ready. This is just, like I say, just for showing you how you would change certain things so you get how to drift. the drift of it is. You need to look at your mapping. Every car you go to is gonna be different, but you've gotta work it out if it's a petrol, you have going to be restricted on the amount of power for every 10, 15%. I wouldn't go any higher on a petrol. I really wouldn't. On a diesel turbo or on a turbocharged car, you can go a lot further because you've got a turbocharger. So obviously with a petrol, with a turbocharged petrol, you need more air, needs more fuel. So therefore you need to fuel it even more. So if we go back from that one, as well and then we go to injection and then if we do injection at part throttle this is where it can get very difficult where you need to know how to correct it and check everything off because even this as you see this is the injection at part throttle so that'll be when you're only just lightly feathering it for instance halfway you got to make sure that you adjust this correctly because you don't want it where sucking fuel now if you want better economy you're going to want to lower all the all these numbers right here you're going to want to lower them and you're not going to want to leave them at the height like this you're going to want to lower all the numbers to make your car more economical on a diesel that's what you would do is lower the certain numbers and create more turbo charge so for instance you'll get more torque than using more fuel that's the way you get better fuel economy and that's what a lot of uh, tuning companies do they lower the fuel ratio to air ratio to create more um 
more torque and lower fuel burn and that's what they usually do but obviously you can't do it that low because obviously it still needs a fuel to mix with the engine otherwise you get detonation knock and that ain't good so therefore you just need to be very specific on how you do these use this tuning file and how you do it like i said the software will be free there i would play about with this before going in and trying to change anything because trust me guys make a wrong mistake and you flash this to your car and you get the trial ready can cause really really bad results for you when you put this on your car i know it's all fun and games to pull it at the max limit but putting it at the max limit can end up causing your car to destroy itself and it wouldn't be worth it in the end you want to get the mapping right that everyone's going to like it and you're going to like it and you're going to feel comfortable with it knowing your car's not going to break like many people push it to their limit and end up with their car completely destroyed okay guys so as you can see here on the side right up here as you can see i've loaded up a 118d flash file now, as you're probably aware from the petrol one I just showed you, and that was M52, you can do a lot more with the diesel than you can with the petrol, and that's the way it is. So as you see here, you get a lot more options for gas quantity recirculation, percentage valve opening, smoke limitation, injection timing, and everything else. Now, as you'll see down here, talk during crank, which is obviously, that's the crank angle of what you want it to be to, that's because we obviously need crank to inject the fuel, and that's the angle at the moment that you'll see right there. Now, when you do a diesel, the 3D mapping comes in very, very handy. Most people know that already. Um, you'll know that how good it is to use this. And as you'll see, you can see the whole mapping. So when you're making your remapping, always use the 3D graph to check everything because it gives you a more clearer picture on how power is gonna come in, how power is gonna leave, and things like that. So as you can see here, I'm going around the mapping and you can see it all there. So guys, now we've returned to the home after you've seen the 3D graph. Now what I want to show you is something else on this that you can actually do. So if we click limit of the max talk. Now this is the part where everyone gets a lot mixed up on this program. Right there, I just click the hex decimal. Now you have to know which code you want to be able to understand what you're writing in here. Now this can be very simple. Or it can be very difficult. Now this is what we call EEPROM data or some people call it EEPROM. But this is all different. It's all different based on the car. No two cars are the same, but it's a load of characters as you see right down there. And you have to know how to read this and how to balance it and how to edit it properly. So as you'll see there, guys, I've now gone over the software showing you how to use ECM Titanium. I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this video on this side of things. Like I said, it was just going to be a very brief video showing you how to remap it. The software will be linked below in the description. So if you guys want to go and try it out or install it, so all you guys can go and download it and have a mess of it so it's not on your original flash. If you do you buy the KESS program, as I spoke about in the video, you'll be able to access this. Like I say, to remap a file, it can take quite a bit of time. And I've shown you the basics of how to just change things around and what to do and where the safe limits are. The ECM will actually tell you where the safe limits are as well if you pull it into high or two, if it goes into red or it's fine in the green. I would be very weary, though, of not to overpower the car because the car might not be able to handle it. There is a lot involved in ECM Titanium. We will be doing a video on Winos as well, how to use that. I prefer to use Winos over ECM Titanium. I think I've used ECM Titanium probably about four times. Um, as they say, if you, you start using this, you end up becoming stuck to it. So try and not use it so much. Try and get yourself onto Winos, which is the more professional system and move yourself away from there because that is where professionals use this one is got very easy to lay out like i say um, many tuners do use this case quick to just remap a file and send it back over remapping companies they use ecm a lot um, they send it over to them they do it on this and then send it back but it's not very hard to use some people already have files ready to go uh, everyone wants different you've got economy files and you've also got power files so just be aware to check that so that's it guys and i hope you've enjoyed this video now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the camera and close this video out Okay guys, so as you would have just seen, I've just shown you how to use ECM Titanium. As I said, the link will be below in the description for any of you that want to go and download it. I would suggest you guys to go and download it. I will put the link in the description below for you guys to go and download the software. Thank you very much for watching guys. Obviously the next video, I'm not sure what it will be, but we'll try and figure out something on the bench of what I can show you guys. But I think the next one's going to end up being is how to update the software on your A60E90M, things like that. Because I know a lot of people keep asking me the same question, how to update it. So I therefore want to go and help all you guys that have been asking that. And I'm going to put that video out for you next. Thank you very much for watching guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.